Good afternoon. Glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and under the ages of ages. Amen. So, uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Servant of Christ podcast. I see that there's a lot of white rooftops out there today. Isn't that wonderful? We got a little bit of snow over here. Um, so, anyway, uh, I wanted to talk to you about St. Zenius Chapel um, today. Good morning. Uh, we, do, as you, Some of you may know, please spread the word that uh, St. Zenius Chapel has been opened up uh, since the 2nd of September of this year. Um, so, anybody who wants to know about Eastern Orthodoxy, uh, let me say why I feel that uh, Orthodoxy is so important for today's world. Um, orthodoxy is really, I, I'm going to be bold with you today, and I'm going to say that uh, Orthodoxy is the oldest expression of Christian worship that we have. Um, so, if you want to go back to the earliest expression of Christian worship, and I'm talking about the period of time that was before the Great Schism, when Rome broke away from the Eastern churches, um, go to the Orthodox Church. Now, Rome, since they broke away, made many innovations, as we know. We already know that, that uh, uh, they've even tossed away the Latin Mass. And I think the Pope has already made it so that it's uh, not allowable to have a Latin Mass. So they've tossed it all away. Um, so they have made claims that the Roman Catholic Church is the oldest church. Well, in one aspect, it, that could be said, but mostly uh, it couldn't be said since the schism of, of 1056. I do believe it's 1056. Correct me if I'm wrong in the box. Uh, if you happen to be Orthodox and you're watching this program today, uh, please send a comment and correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, at any rate, the uh, point is that the Roman Catholic, Catholic Church broke away and excommunicated the Eastern Church back before the sec, uh, before um, well, it was the first hundred years of the second century, I believe. Now, uh, so uh, that's come down to the very day, this very day here, uh, twenty twenty three, that uh, there is no Latin Mass, not allowable anymore. So we can truthfully say today that the oldest Christian form of worship in the world is. Orthodox worship. If you want to go back to a time, St. John Chrysostom, uh, he was here uh, and he, he lived and he died in the 400s. And uh, St. Great uh, Basil the Great uh, was around in the 300s. So um, they weren't very far removed from the apostles. Uh, they were probably they were probably in line of about three or four successors from the apostles. So how shall we say the Christian worship uh, flowered out of the temple? Uh, most of those people that um, were in the early church, I'm talking about the Jewish populations, were accustomed to uh, synagogue uh, etiquette. They, they behaved uh, in the churches as if they were in a synagogue. Because originally, we have to remember that the church was all Jewish until St. Paul appeared. Uh, well, the Lord sent St. Peter down to uh, Joppa. To baptize and chrismate Cornelius uh, the pagan, the Gentile, uh, who was a Roman uh, centurion. So, but the church's worship, informal worship, uh, what we call Christian worship today, began from the synagogue and out of temple worship, which involved the burning of incense, amongst other things, um, and candles. Um, if anybody uh, goes to a church and they fail to recognize that candles are part of Christian worship. They've been removed so far away from the main stream that they've forgotten to have even had candles in church. Uh, the book of, I think it's the book of Matthew, I think. I'm not sure. One of the gospels says that you don't put a candle under a bushel basket, but you put it up on a place, uh, a higher place, where it can be sh shed its light throughout the whole area, the whole room. And, uh, keep it in mind, I'm paraphrasing here. So I want to invite you, I want to take a special moment out here to invite you, if you live in this area, in the Dexter area of Dexter, I'm talking Garland, Exeter, uh, even, there's, uh, there's going to be some coming even from as far away as Rockland, uh, to attend our first in our inaugural uh, Divine Liturgy. Which, uh, basically what that is, it's a liturgy, uh, it is a service with a priest. 
he's going to be serving the Eucharist, which uh, the Protestant churches call the, the communion. So uh, just keep in mind that we have the blessed bread available for anybody who is non-Orthodox, but only Orthodox themselves may receive the Eucharist. But but don't take that personal. Um, if you want, you can become you can become catechumenized and become chrismated, and you you may receive it. It's it's all that. It's just really that simple. So, but I want to invite you to Saint Zenia's Chapel uh, if you're interested in learning about the original the original and the earliest form of Christian worship that we know of, please come to St. Zenia's Chapel. Um, when the priest is not here, we do have our services, but they are reader services. Uh, we do have a Vespers every Saturday night at 5 p.m. And we have a Tipica, which is a reader service in the absence of a priest, every Sunday morning at 11 with a meal following. We always bring something to share. So it's always a potluck, uh, which is called the Agape Meal in some Orthodox circles. So you are welcome to come to 11 Church Street in Dexter, Maine on a Sunday morning. Go to the church that's just beyond the red light between the library and the, the Hannaford Supermarket parking lot. Uh, in between the two is a beautiful, white, majestic, beautiful antique church, which is the original meeting house of Dexter, the first Universalist and the only Universalist church in the town of Dexter. Wonderful, beautiful people. Um, very sweet people. But please come. Go to the back door uh, of the side of the building that is facing the library. And we will have our sign out there, St. Xenia's Chapel. And when you come in, it'll be the first place, the first room to the right as you walk in that door. So we hope to see you. Uh, we, we're there every day uh, at noontime to pray the six-hour prayer. And every day at three to pray the ninth hour prayer and every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and every Saturday night at uh, 5 p.m. and once every fourth week. When we don't know. We haven't figured. We haven't got that to that point yet. We're going to have a priest here to serve the divine liturgy. Which is, if you have never been to a divine liturgy, I would really encourage you to come by and see. You're going to see. When I first walked into an Orthodox church, and I'm going to base this on my own experience. Uh, me coming out of the world of Protestantism, uh, especially Pentecostal, United Pentecostal Church. Uh, when I got into that Orthodox Church and I started hearing that Byzantine music, it made my hair stand on end. I, I, it was just amazing. It broke me down. Um, they were singing the Trisagion song. It made me weep. It's very, very powerful stuff. And uh, I would re highly recommend it. And I hope and pray that we'll see you. Uh, if you do show up, if you do decide to come to our church, uh, please tell us uh, if you've learned about us online or through voice of mouth. Thank you. Spread the word. There is Eastern Orthodoxy now in the town of Dexter. Glory to Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and under the ages of ages. Amen. And enjoy that snow out there, folks. God bless.